Hello everyone, hello, welcome back on the Ag Adventures channel. And today is a kind of interesting day. We have the opportunity to speak with someone really, really, really interesting. Hello, Valerie, welcome over here. Hello, Simone, good to be here with you. Thanks for inviting me on. It was a pleasure. And uh, uh, so, Valerie, where are you from? Oh, um, I'm from South Australia. From South Australia, yes, yes, I yes. exactly. The name, <laughs> the accent is a perfectly South Australian. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, well, um, not really, but in my heart, I'm definitely from South Australia. But I um, landed here in 1994. I let you do the math, um, and I followed uh, my heart and the man of my life, so in 1994, and fell in love with the country instantly. It's very easy to do, isn't it? I think yeah. we've got a similar story. It maybe. is, it is. Okay, so for who's following on the radio, on, on the Agri Adventures uh, platform, Valerie, uh, she's the founder at the Smelly Cheese Shop. Is that correct? Or uh, the yeah, co-founder? Well, yeah, so, well, it's, it's a little more complicated than that, but um, because my partner, um, had this big cheese empire. Well, it sort of became a little bit like that. He hates when I say things like that. But um, And uh, uh, when I was missing tremendously uh, some cheese that oh. I cherished before, um, I, I found them at um, his place. So, uh, of course, one thing led to the next. And cheese really is what connected us um, really. So it's, it's interesting, but the cheese shop was existing before me and I turned then the smelly cheese shop as it is today, which is something a little bigger than it used to be in terms of what we represent and what we're trying to achieve. So mm -hmm. it's exciting. Okay. And so you're obviously from France. Yes, born and in Normandy. Normandy, oh, okay, yes, so the it, cost. So that's it, northwest of Paris, um, <clears throat> very oh, green pastures, terrible weather. Um, so coming here was wonderful to see, you know, that you didn't have to worry about the weather every morning when you wake up. Uh, <laughs> it was a real nice um, welcome change. Um, but yeah, so coming from Normandy, my attachment to cheese was never underestimated by me anyway and I, it suddenly became obvious that i was missing something um you know after a little while here which led yeah. me to be who i am today okay so you decided simply to bring over sexy smelly cheeses that is in it Sa in south australia and exactly. actually it's an amazing thing because a lot of people because you've been doing this uh, they are now getting more interested in uh, in cheeses and all these things. Yes, and and you know, um, Simone, I think it's pretty similar to you too. But it feels like um, I'm at the right place at the right time. Australian people they travel a lot, um, unlike uh, the French people. We're very territorial and we don't move a lot, uh, but the Australian do uh, travel a lot, so they do encounter good cheese, good food, good wine. So when they come back. They're just really quite interested um, and they certainly look for what they've tasted abroad. Um, but you're right, 25 years ago, uh, the interest might not have been as high as it is right now. Certainly the offer was not as uh, exciting and, and uh, wide as it is now. Um, but for, for me to, to be able to be here with the, the, the right accent for that, job um, made me really suddenly the, at the center of something that I didn't expect to do. And um, I have to admit that I learned so much um, while trying to put together that um, range of cheese that I really wanted for myself originally uh, and then shared with the rest of the world. Uh, but what happened is that uh, by looking for the, 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 the little gems everywhere, I not only found it, but found the people that were making it. And those people were, oh my goodness, such amazing people, passionate people. They live a life that really uh, I wasn't accustomed to. I just 
I didn't know the place they were living in and I had no idea, you know, what being a cheesemaker uh, is really entailing. So it's, I, I became completely fascinated uh, by them, uh, by their story and really more than once would have liked to bring them with the cheese that I was um, choosing to bring back to Australia. But um, as you know, cheese is hard enough to bring, let alone the cheesemaker with the cheese. Yes. Exactly, exactly. And especially this time of... Uh, of yeah, the, of <laughs> well, yeah really that's difficult. not even mentioned today. Yeah, that's for sure. Really difficult. But sorry, you have been working in which industry? Like before becoming you at Smelly Cheese, what, what was your job? Like well, When I was... So before that, uh, it's very unusual because I was working... Uh, I was born in Normandy, but um, studied and worked all my adult life in... Um, in Paris because I wanted to uh, be a, a filmmaker. So I studied film and I, I did um, some uh, job work at, as an assistant director. Um, and then uh, later on did work for film festivals. So I was, my years in France were really timed by fest film festivals. So there was Cannes, Deauville, La Vorias, Cognac. And so the whole year was one festival <clears throat> after the next. To the point that um, after three, four years, I thought, okay, I can do my own festival now. And I created the first Australian film festival in uh, Paris in 1988. Now I'm just giving away my age. I was very young, but um, nevertheless spent um, three months in London to do a little selection of uh, Australian film at the uh, Australian Film Corporation there. And uh, yeah, presented 22 Australian films uh, in, on the Champs-Élysées. Wow. At the Gaumont um, uh, Cinema there and had the uh, Australian ambassador. And I had um, Isabelle Huppert who um, works a lot with uh, um, Australian, not a lot, but she did a few film with uh, Australian filmmakers. And um, it was my, and by then, by the way, I had never been to Australia. So it was only a fantasy of mine. Like Australia mm -hmm. is a big fantasy for uh, European people and possibly the French. Uh, the French are just completely crazy about Australia. I think mm -hmm. it's like a big dream, something that is creating an incredible um, image uh, in, uh, in their imagination. But um, I, I, by then I had never been to um, Australia, so it was quite, quite bizarre. But I remember trying to get some uh, interesting Australian filmmakers. And um, one of them was Peter Weir, of course, because I had a picnic at Hanging Rock, which is a very famous film. And um, I found his, um, his phone number and remember ringing one day thinking, oh, it's going to be, you know, I'm never going to get him to talk to me but it took only one person say can i please speak to peter weir and the next second i got peter weir talking speaking and i went whoa like it would never ever happen in france you know i would have no. you know, had barrier after barrier after yeah. barrier you know but italy is the same italy is the same yeah so that was a, a that was a like a little link inkling that uh, you know australian people were very different from the uh, Euro european um, People, we are little. We so so much more uh, clothed, and and you know we protect ourselves so much more, and we less fun, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree for that. Say I agree. Okay, so Valerie, tell us a little bit about uh, the the this magic cheese show, uh, because uh, I know it's it's kind of famous. It's located in the central market, and a lot of people they go in the central market every week. To taste and visit today, one day it, the best of what South Australia can offer in a, in terms of food. But yep. maybe they never had the opportunity to stop by uh, your shop. So, what? Tell me something. Okay. So the smelly cheese shop. Um, the concept of the smelly cheese shop is really to open up an opportunity for any cheese lovers or budding cheese lovers to approach a cheesemonger and start like a little adventure, a little journey. Mm -hmm. um, we believe strongly that, um, I mean, cheese is, is a super attractive product. You know, you see a beautiful cheese and chances are you want to try it. So <clears throat> we um, created cheese testings um, 
on nearly, I mean, nearly every day of the week, possibly more so Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, and we had two tasting tables. We have now only one since COVID. I mean, in fact, we had none uh, during COVID and now we have one again. <clears throat> but it's a crucial part of our uh, concept because we want to establish a, a, a connection with uh, the customer and allow um, a, a bridge to be connected. And so, you know, the, I think we want to hold their hand if they're willing i mean there's you know we don't have to do that it's just like if they are happy to um get their curiosity uh, a little um, tickled then we can take them and introduce them to new different cheese and it gives us an opportunity to tell stories also and the story that are behind especially the european cheese there is an enormous and infinite and, and it, it, what's the word an enormous amount of stories behind um, European cheeses. And I think they're super important and they, they put the cheese in perspective. They gives it a little, a greater sense. And I think it tastes better overall when you know that, um, uh, for example, Louis the 16th um, was a, an, an incredibly, I mean, he was quite fat if you can picture Louis the 16th, but um, uh, he, he loved the brie, for instance, and when the Bastille, you know, when the, all the drama at the Bastille uh, eventuated, he had to flee, as you know, and um, so he went on his carrosse uh, uh, and went towards um, Austria, where his wife, Marie Antoinette, was coming from. And on the way out, uh, Louis XVI said, stop, when they, they passed um, in front of an inn in the brie area, and he wanted to fill up his um, cart with a big brie, you know, to sort of uh, keep, you know, go away, um, but at least with the food he liked. And that's when they arrested him. Oh, so no. The, the, brie, <laughs> the, the brie costed him his life, which, you know, I know it's not going to, well, I think, you know, once you know this story, you never forget it, but um, it's an interesting concept. So we call that the king of cheese, but there is more to king that you probably think. Oh, so that's Absolutely. one of those extraordinary stories, and I, I love them. There's so many. Absolutely, that this is, is actually the same motive why I organize experience correlate with wine and food in general. Yeah, so there is always a story behind the food, and uh, and it's amazing when you have the opportunity to uh, meet the producer and have an opportunity to chat with them and see what are the difficulties that they have to face. Because yeah. for us, it's easy, you know, you get the Face, put it in your mouth and then it's gone but yeah. for them it's years and years and years of hard work just to oh, yeah. get to that small piece so Absolutely. having the opportunity for them to to for us to learn about is also give value to those products oh i couldn't agree more okay. and so that's that's the, the that's what we are applying ourselves to do and try to get the customers to see beyond the cheese you know to see that the the maybe sometimes the struggle but the hard work that has been uh, put you know behind the cheese that they're testing and and also all those traditions that uh, some of them are thousand years old uh, and to know that you know we've been the, the custodian of a tradition that thank god uh, got to us in the 21st century is in itself uh, a real achievement, I think. And knowing that, I think it's important to sh not only cherish that, but, you know, stop and, sh and enjoy and, and pay attention and make sure that we continue uh, being the custodian and transmit those traditions to our children and grandchildren. I think we're part of a big chain that uh, that'd be a tragedy to for that to be lost. So we feel like we've got our little bit to do in that regard. Um, Plus this idea that now we are applying the, the same thing to um, the cheesemaker here in Australia uh, with whom I, 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 we work a lot. Um, and it's fascinating, fascinating to see how this part of um, the cheesemaking industry is um, evolving. Uh, you probably, you're very aware that um, the wine industry in Australia has made a big impact in the European world. Uh, it hasn't been easy, but now everybody knows about, you know, the fact that Australia is making wine. Mm -hmm. um, so in that regard, I think the wine is possibly 20 years ahead, at least uh, ahead of the, the, the cheese making industry. 
But, and we're not quite there with the cheese industry. I mean, if you ask a French person or an Italian person, uh, you know, have you tasted any Australian cheese? The people are going to go, what uh, are you talking about exactly? So um, it's only the beginning there, but it's, it's an exciting beginning. And um, so we're working so that the, the Australian cheesemakers find their place, find their, their, their pace, and also find their terroir. Because as you know, yeah. uh, you know, the, the French terroir, or if you want to do a, a camembert in Normandy, it will never taste the same if you replicate the recipe here in South yeah. Australia. Doesn't Absolutely. mean that it's not going to be good, but it's not going to be the same. No. So to, for uh, the Australian cheesemakers and also the consumers to understand the impact of the terroir is hugely important and to find a name for it, uh, explore it, enjoy it, embrace it, um, and use it to the max and you yeah, know make exactly. something that is typically Australian is the next step. Is the next, yes, and then a beauty opportunity to like you know explore new things like we we're gonna have now a big wave of native uh natives products here in australia which are amazing and that's yeah. really interesting having them interact in different parts including the cheese too yeah but question um uh, valerie uh, for people obviously they want to come and uh, taste cheeses and purchase products obviously they can come over there in the central market but is there another way like if they cannot come physically over there can they buy from a website for instance or a... yes so thank you for um pointing it out yes indeed and um we have a, a website which is smellycheese.com.au and we, mm -hmm. we 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 have an online shop and COVID has been, that's been one of the silver lining of COVID is that we had to be very flexible, but certainly for us, uh, the online has uh, tripled like um, overnight and with the uh, effect of COVID, um, it's not quite as high now, but I think people have understood that um, buying your cheese online is something that you can do. Uh, and we sell here in Adelaide, but we sell throughout Australia on a regular basis and we are going to really even make it easier and um, <clears throat> once you appreciate and once your the relationship with the customer has been established and once we've um, earned their trust then we're going to really push that further and if they're happy you know decide uh, what sort of cheese they'd like and send that regularly to them without them to think too much of it, except then, you know, when they receive it, they need to stop, have a look at it and explore new territories, new stories, new cheese, and um, hopefully discover something quite exciting. So yes. yes, it's a big part of what we're doing and what we're gonna continue to do um, and explore even in, in a much bigger way. So uh, stay tuned on this one. Perfect. Which actually for, for what I know is uh, even it, bit of difficult to have cheeses imported here in Australia because the limitations and the fact that you cannot have a raw milk uh, for cheese imported apart from some aging. Like I have so many cheeses that I love in Italy that I can't have over here because no. they are yeah. raw milk and they are not passing the, the, the but that is too much technical. I think we're going to go. Well, and... it is and it is not. I think it's crucial for people to know about that because I think as consumers, we have our, our um, we should talk about it and we should push the government to uh, relax and, and allow the raw milk to be part of our life. I think it will happen. I think and New Zealand is um, uh, authorizing uh, raw milk cheeses. And yeah, I and so, something about. Yeah, they're far more relaxed in New Zealand than they're here. So I think there is a little bit of a misunderstanding here with the risk that um, raw milk is um, producing. Um, but there's, in my head, there's no doubt that if we want uh, our Australian cheesemakers to compete at the, the international level, mm. we need to allow them to do cheese the way their counterpart is doing the cheese. And Absolutely. raw milk is really exploring the terroirs in, in, in such a, a greater way. And there's no interference, you know, the, the cows or the animals are grazing the, 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 the place and they, they translate that in the milk, which is intact if you don't uh, pasteurize it. So 
I think we miss out. And like you, I'm a little frustrated not being able to have my raw milk camembert. Yeah. Raw milk yeah. camembert. So well, um, look, I think that <laughs> we are alive. I mean, uh, I've been yes. in Italy for 30 years. I've been eating uh, raw milk, cheese yeah, for 30 exactly. years. No problem. You survived. Yeah, yeah, survived. Exactly. And I'm not allergic to lactose or casein. So no, it's you know, and it's so good that this raw milk is so good because it's it's not compromised. You know, you have all the goodness of that milk, and it's much better for your guts in general. So, yeah, honestly, it's um, I know scientifically, and I mean that sort of poses extra questions, no doubt. But I think we need to. Uh, hopefully, this is something that uh, we'll see in our lifetime, you know, raw milk in, uh, in Australia. In Australia, yes. Okay, so a last question. Where would you like to go? You spoke, you, you said a little bit already, like, what will be the, the, the your vision for, for, for yourself as professional in cheese and for the Smelly Cheese Shop? Yeah, so... This, um, this is something that is taking a lot of my time at the moment and um, like uh, putting a vision into, uh, into reality. And I think, again, silver lining from COVID, uh, something has sort of pushed us to develop um, something probably faster than uh, we would have had uh, otherwise. But um, I'm really now looking at creating an umbrella that really encompasses different ways to um, do business. So this online shop is one uh, of one way that we obviously uh, expanded on and, and probably going to do even greater work like that. But education, and that's what we're doing together, but education is a huge part and are certainly going to expand on that um, a lot too. And now appreciate the fact that we can reach people so much better and further away um, by using these new technologies that um, we're using right now. So yeah, exactly. yeah, it, it, it's incredible. So doing more of that um, and with my background in, in, in movies, in films, I'm also uh, looking at uh, creating some a documentary on the producers and and, and give um, a, a greater chance uh, for the consumer to see who is behind the product that they, they like. So spending a bit more time on the road, meeting more people, documenting these, um, these uh, little road trips. And um, so that's gonna happen. That's, you know, a lot is happening in the next uh, five to 10 years. Yeah. And also, one thing that I am so, so passionate about is trying to help people slowing down and paying attention to what they have. I mean, you know, the fact that we are a little stuck here, I mean, it's not a bad place to be stuck between you and me. No, oh, it's not. That before. Uh, but, you know, it's, you know, we, rather than feeling sorry for ourselves, just realizing that when we have, one of the greatest, most beautiful backyard uh, in the world. Uh, we've got some amazing producers, access to some extraordinary wines, cheese from here and also from all over the world. So really the only thing that is lacking is the attention that we pay to all those things. So I'm gonna really apply myself to uh, explore more of those sensory experiences by helping people appreciating that, you know, whatever they listen to, whatever they smell, whatever they see, whatever they touch and, and, and taste is super important. And, and by really playing with all those senses, creating something that is a, a much bigger experience. So I'm excited. I've got uh, some good ideas with that, playing with music and with lots of fun. Uh, uh, other elements to make a, a cheese and wine experience like you know the best things that another planet have. yes so another planet exciting okay uh, thank you very much for being very here welcome. with us for this interview on the Agri adventures platform on radio italia one of the light uh, for the people that's following they will find the link below somewhere in the post thank you thank you so much thank enjoy you. the rest of your day see you on thank thursday you. <laughs> Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye.